Weekly Shonen Jump is one of the most prominent manga magazines in Japan, being serialized for over 50 years bringing countless battle manga franchises into popularity, with many receiving anime adaptations and overall selling the most units of any manga magazine worldwide. From 1968 to the current day, both weekly and monthly Shonen Jump issues have published long-running classics like Dragon Ball, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, Roroni Kenshin, City Hunter, Fist of the North Star, and Jojo just to name a few, so it's no wonder with such popular characters from hundreds of franchises, occasionally fans have delighted to see crossovers both printed on the page as well as duking it out on their TV screens. While an extremely limited number of anime crossovers exist, with most of them being for promotional and celebratory purposes, in this video I'll be focusing on the video game crossovers where the action is put into your hands and the ultimate question of who is the strongest anime character can be decided. Have you ever wondered what would happen if Goku went up against Luffy? Or who would win if Naruto got pitted against Ichigo? That's really the biggest fun factor of many of these games, and while a couple of them have had English releases in the West, the vast majority of them stay exclusive to Japan. And, just so you know, I'm focusing solely on the crossover and compilation Jump titles here. Not every game adaptation from any manga featured in Jump, because that would take forever. Maybe in the future I'll go through the history of a couple of franchises, but for now, let's go back to 1989 and get this video started. Kicking things off in Japan, February 1989, a new decade of technological advancements was about to begin. Shonen Jump had just recently celebrated its 20th year anniversary, and the video game industry was booming, with Nintendo's Famicom console dominating sales over the last three years. Four years prior, Bandai had published the first video game based on a manga for the Famicom, that being Tag Team Match Muscle based on the wrestling manga Kinikuman. Five years prior to that, Bandai had also launched the first Gundam plastic model kit, essentially giving birth to the Gunpla sub-hobby of anime model collectors. More on that another time. At this time, Bandai was an aggressive company boldly taking risks in industries that were only starting to take shape. Forming a partnership with Shueisha, Bandai released the first Shonen Jump crossover game, Famicom Jump Hero Retsuden, translating to Hero's History. Using 33 popular franchises from both present and past, in this game the main character is sucked into the world of Shonen Jump, being forced to travel around recruiting popular heroes such as Kenshiro, Son Goku, and Joseph Joestar to fight against the evil villains from the Jump universe. The game plays like an action RPG similar to The Legend of Zelda, and it's worth noting that this is the first video game debut of many of the characters from the popular manga and anime franchises, some of which would never be seen in a video game adaptation again. With over 1.1 million units sold in Japan, a graphically improved sequel followed in February of 1991, titled Famicom Jump 2, Saikyo no Shichinin, or literally, The Strongest Seven. Again, published by Bandai, this time the gameplay uses a turn-based grid system, with any three of the seven playable characters forming the party. Many of the previous series used in the first game are discarded, with the only returning characters being Goku and Momotaro Surugi. The game plays like a standard RPG, you go around the world map, you enter towns and dungeons, you fight monsters and complete quests. You start the game as one of the seven playable characters and adventure around to recruit the rest. This was the final RPG of the franchise, the next game released two years later was a portable trivia game on the Game Boy again through Bandai. The overview of this game is, the king of the jump world has been imprisoned in a castle far away. It is up to the reader of Shonen Jump to use all of his knowledge and their published works to beat opponents and rescue the king. This time, excluding Jungle King Tachan from the roster, the remaining six of the strongest seven accompany you through 50 stages of quizzes and trivia, all revolving around the magazine and the many series within it. Other characters make brief cameos such as several of the Dragon Ball characters, but there is a steep learning curve with the Japanese language barrier, and this can be brutal to try to advance the game. The next game was another portable game, this time on dual screens. Fast forwarding all the way to August 2005, this time Nintendo took the opportunity to release Shonen Jump Superstars, exclusively on the Nintendo DS and exclusively in Japan, again! This game marked the first time 36 playable characters from popular Jump series all got together 
in a battle royale sorts to slam, punch, kick and blast their way to total dominancy. A further 124 characters were included for stories and support, and while this game isn't the best Jump Smash clone out there, it was the first one and it set the standard for all the following games to rise above and supersede. It's also worth mentioning that this is the first time modern Jump characters from One Piece, Bleach and Naruto appeared for the first time on the roster together. There are hundreds of references for fans including Light Yagami and L appearing as support characters which is always amazing. It includes 4 player multiplayer as you'd expect and was also popular enough to receive a sequel the following year. But between this came the first console fighting game and possibly one of the more widely known games to fans. This time Bandai is back with newly formed partner Namco to bring Battle Stadium D.O.N. onto PlayStation 2 and GameCube, with wonderful players taking on characters like Piccolo and Fujita, fighting as Zoro and Sanji, with the next match featuring Kakashi and Sasuke, this was the battle manga fan's dream come true. Although featuring a mere 20 characters from 3 franchises, this game was made with a higher budget and it was the first time you could set up the Saiyans fighting the Straw Hat Pirates with the highest capabilities at the time. Because players were not eliminated until all battle orbs were collected by the winner, if no time limit was set, matches could last hours if allowed to and this was a popular choice among competitive fighting game enthusiasts. Going back to the DS, late 2006, Jump Ultimate Stars was released which upped the formula of its prequel to greater lengths. Now with over 300 characters, 56 of which are playable, this at the time was the largest anime and manga cast all put together in one video game. The manga panel deck building gameplay from the first game was largely left unchanged as what matters here is the sheer size of the roster and the fan references made within it. From DS to 3DS, November 2013 saw a compilation of 9 Japanese exclusive Famicom and Super Famicom games released onto one cartridge. 4 Dragon Ball games were included, with the possibility of a 5th as DLC, 2 Saint Seiya games were included, as well as Saki Gake Otoko Juku based on a delinquent manga from 1985, a Yu Yu Hakusho game as well as the third Gogo Akman video game based on an Akira Toriyama manga that never got a full length anime counterpart. In March 2014, Japan got its second high budget console crossover game, J-Star's Victory Versus, with the English Plus version being released to western countries the following year. In 26 years of Shonen Jump games and 45 years of the magazine, this was the first time the West got anything released, despite advertising for the DS games back in 2005, and it was long overdue. Easily one of the better games to be released, the gameplay takes heavy influence from the arcade game Dragon Ball Z Zenkai Battle, as players can run, fight and fly in all directions on one of 12 3D battlefields and the basic premise involves a tournament being held by the god of Jump World, which is corny but fitting. This game features the most updated cast of characters, with this video coming out just shy of Jump Force's release. This game included recent fan favourites like Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom, as well as Toriko from Toriko, and Madaka from Madaka Box. Two smartphone games have also been released in the last two years, the first being Ode Collection, a microtransaction, card collecting, summoning style game which can be accessed on browsers for those not in Japan, and the second, Jikyo Janjan Stadium, which is literally just another Smash fighting game with a chibi art style and iOS controls. And that brings us to 2019. That was my brief history of Shonen Jump in video games. I hope you enjoyed this video. Game names are listed in the description below. I'm very much looking forward to the upcoming Jump Force, and as I make this video, I'm off to play the beta, so I'll see you next time. Oh, a funny story about this, I was supposed to be playing the beta of Shonen Jump Force, but it was a 24 hour clock, and what I thought was 2 in the afternoon was 2 in the morning. So I get here 12 hours late, ready to jump in the beta, and it's already finished. So that was the last beta, I missed it. So here we're playing this instead. Obviously, I'm not cool. <laughs>